Good morning, everybody. My name is Nasir Marouche. I'm one of the cardiologists at the uh, University of Utah. What I want to share with you today is the power of collaboration in changing medicine, based on an example I uh, brought with me. I want to be a doctor since I was 11 years old. This is a story I also want to share with you. My mom, my dad, everybody around me knew I'm going to be a physician. And I'm enjoying every single day since I was 11 years old. I never regret any single days of those. I continue to be enjoying my work and seeing patients. But we, for the last 20 years, when I treat patients, when I see them, I usually act to the fact they present to me with. You come with a, I'm a cardiologist, you come with a chest pain, you come with a irregular heartbeats, you come with shortness of breath. I act, I react based on this, and I treat you or I give you a pill, or I give you a catheter, or a pacemaker, whatever. That's great, and this is a big joy to me. There's nothing more satisfactory in medicine than seeing the relief on a patient's face, or he or she doing better later on. Having said all, all that, until a while ago, I saw a patient of mine, which is an example I brought with me, that I want to share with you. A major change happened to me that I could luckily work with a group of people to make a difference based on collaboration in medicine. This is a scan of a normal brain. You can see there's nothing unusual. And this is a patient who came to see me because of a stroke. You can't miss this. You know, the white spots in here, this is a stroke on a patient's brain. And the reason why this patient came to see me, because unfortunately, and after the fact, we detected a, a clot in his heart that went in the bloodstream to the brain and caused a stroke. And this clot, came to life because of this irregular heartbeat that the patient had when he came to see me after the fact. So he came to see me, he, and he belongs to around 30 to 35 percent of the people who are experiencing stroke every day in the world who experience their strokes because of arrhythmia like this, or irregular heartbeats like this. The same patient, only one year ago, he went to see his physician for a routine check, like most of us do. He had a normal, beautiful, regular rhythm. He had a normal stress test. And he had a normal echocardiogram. So his doc did everything right. What if I get more proactive and we, and that, that's what this patient triggered in me. Why I continue to see these patients every week with these problems? Why we physicians don't try to be more proactive, try to jump on the problem before it gets to lead to horrible consequences. Why not? So that's what I started with a group of people at the University of Utah, is the, the concept of being proactive instead of dealing with the fact of being after the fact. We all know in medicine, not only in heart disease and cardiologists and cardiac surgeons and so on, that diseased Heart tissue is a ticking bomb. We have more than 150,000 strokes in America alone due to irregular heartbeats and diseased heart tissue. Diseased heart tissue lead to more than 400,000 lost lives in America alone based on sudden cardiac death. To tackle that concept and to think differently, and this is what I want to share with you today, the power of this collaboration, we started the Comprehensive Arrhythmia Research and Management Center, the Karma Center, at the University of Utah. And the reason why is to focus on that patient. So we cardiologists went and looked for people around us who will think focusing on a disease from multiple angles, from various angles. I see the disease in this narrow path. I see the stroke, I see irregular heartbeats, I deal with it. I wanted somebody to tell me why we get here, how we get here, and put it in one context. We approached, we cardiologists, we approached the image analysis, the imager experts, software engineers. We approached the cellular scientists, biologists. We approached the MRI specialist. This is all within one campus around us. We start calling people, and people would come. We were lucky, by the way. They come to the table. And last but not least, we approached the outcome researcher to tell us about population and behavior of heart disease and so on. So we set all of us together. And everybody, as I'm going to show you, contributed from different angle, focusing on this 
single patient disease, a regular heartbeat and sudden cardiac death. Our job as cardiologists, we went to the group, we said, okay, can you help us pinpoint individual changes within that heart, disease heart cells, that help me avoid these horrible consequences of heart disease like strokes and sudden cardiac death. So we started with a cellular biologist, with a cellular scientist, and I told them, can you help us differentiate, look at these tissues? So within three weeks later, he came back to us, he said, this is a normal, healthy heart tissue, and this is a diseased heart tissue, they look like this. Nasir said, great, I can do this in every patient, open the chest and take a, a piece of tissue. We need to see it in a different way, How can, what can we do? So we took all this information and we walked over to the next friend of our, ours, or partner in the group, which is the MRI specialist. We told him, can you show us this on MRI? He said, it's a little difficult, let me think about it. Put the team together, two weeks later, he came, by the way, this is it's a major breakthrough in medicine. He could detail a certain two millimeter, three millimeter wall due based on this sequence that he developed with his team. But more importantly, I'm going to this chamber for 20 years of my life. I'm giving drugs, I'm giving blood thinners, I'm putting catheters, pacemakers. I never knew that this looked like this. I'm dealing with the fact and after the fact. That guy thought about a different way, he brought it to life for me to think about it and trying to help patients a different way. And we, obviously, like you in the room, and everybody, did not know what to deal with. So, okay, this looks great, this is a great finding. What, what, how should I use my patient care? So we went, all of us together, to the image processing guy in our group. I said, can you work on this for us? I said, let me see what I can do with it. Two weeks later, he comes back with this software that made it clear to me to understand and quantify the disease heart tissue. You can tell here, blue is healthy tissue, green is disease heart tissue. Even I can understand it now. So he gave me an image, so this is your patient, monsieur. So I know, when the patient comes to see me, I can quantify and look at disease from healthy heart tissue, can quantify them. But what that means, and that brings me to the next slide, a groundbreaking finding, in my opinion, in the last five years in medicine, which is called the Utah Classification for Heart Disease and Arrhythmias. The outcome researcher came out, took all these hearts of thousands of patients, and he said, you know what? That's a new staging system that we need to follow, like we do in other diseases. Everybody knows somebody who have unfortunately suffered from cancer or treated for cancer. We don't treat cancer today based on everybody get chemotherapy or everybody gets surgery, or everybody get whatever, radiation. We stage them first. It's a small, widespread metastasis and so on. Why not in heart disease? Why we deal with the fact after? Why not before? Think, look at tissue before we treat them or trying to prevent them. So the staging is called the Utah staging. Stage one, you can tell little green, little disease. Stage two, more green. Stage three, way more. And stage four, a lot. This is not only groundbreaking in helping us defining who needs a pill, who needs a blood thinners, avoid unnecessary procedures, saving this system, which is costing us for this arrhythmia only more than $15 billion in America alone, a lot of money. But as important is that we know now that UTA 3 and UTA 4, if I see this heart today, are high risk of stroke. That's what the data and this collaboration led us to see. That's huge. When I see a patient today, like mine, that I started with today, I wish I'd seen this patient one year ago. I would have protected them for blood thinners. But there was no indication one year ago. Everything was normal because we did not look at the tissue of that specific patient. I may have been able to avoid this stroke today if I'd seen this a year ago. I put these puzzles together to tell you that we focus, this collaboration, the power of collaboration brought us to focus around this patient. The picture is a disease, different angles. The cardiology is only a piece of this. I would say 20% piece in this picture or less. That's important. We're missing this in medicine, across the fields, not only in cardiology. This has a lot to do with us, cardiologists and physicians. We think we had it all. We think, oh, you come to me, give you a pill, you feel better, fantastic. 
we need to think with different angles, invite people to be part of this. I hope I can show you today in the previous slides that this power of collaboration leads to something we call it personalized treatment, focusing that specific heart, individual heart, cell by cell, tissue by tissue, and heart by heart. And it brought for me, with me today more than 60 hearts from my patients. And you see them here. This is, could be any of you sitting in this room. could be any of these hearts. And on purpose, I brought the 88-year-old man who have only little changes. That's his age of his heart. Very young. There's no destruction. And I brought with me a person, a 55-year-old woman, trying to go and train for a Tour de France in the mountains of Utah. See how diseased she is, her heart. Although she's not feeling anything, she's feeling great. The routine testing. This could be anywhere. Personalized heart disease, the power of collaboration brought us very fast, as you can tell in this example. And not only. Now the MRI specialist is getting more, more proactive. This is a patient, and this is a patient. You can see the difference. It's striking, right? There's a lot of green, healthy tissue, diseased tissue. But this is a lower chamber. We call it the ventricle. Responsible, major driver of sudden cardiac death. The MRI specialist was scanning. He called me, not I. He called me. He said, Nasir, I want to run this by the image analysis. We have a problem here. Since I'm not seeing the image very well. We ran it. We turned out that this person here, this person, compared to here, you can't miss it even, have a lot of scarring, a lot of diseased tissue. This patient is protected today with a defibrillator, ICD, to prevent sudden cardiac death, based on an image analysis finding that called the physician to tell him, be careful, we have a problem here. So we implemented this in a ventricle and other chamber of the heart as well. Since 1969, we're doing major, major progress in improving medicine, cardiac diseases, and so on. We're improving from 450 uh, lives lost a year to 120 today. But look how slow this curve is going down. And this is because of lack of collaboration in medicine. If we reproduce this concept I just showed you today and showed you from the Karma Center, everywhere in every aspect of medicine and cardiac disease, this will go about like a, from the cliff. This red line will go immediately down, I hope, potentially to almost zero. I hope we can achieve that one day. To take a comparison from what we do today and everybody's life can connect to, everybody of you can connect to this. I bet you everybody have a Palm Pilot one day, a flip phone, an iPad. Remember the iPad, this big white one? Calculators, anybody still have this, one of those? <laughs> Probably this have in your collection in, in, in one of the museums, the Polaroid camera. This was before 2007, we forget that. Massive amount of collaboration for brains, the communication geniuses, the hardware processor geniuses came all together with the photo industry, with the music industry, and came up with this. The smartphone, I bet you, only like a few percentage of you doesn't use a smartphone today. Within five years, 2007, this, is, this wave started because we invested so much, not only brain, manpower, but also money and, and, and encouragement. We want more. When is, the, when is the next one coming for? When is the next iPhone coming for? When is iPhone, iPhone, iPhone 5.5 coming for? We encourage everybody to do so. Not in medicine, unfortunately. We stay behind. We wait for the physician to tell us what to do. We don't go and encourage collaboration in medicine. It's lacking. I have to tell you a story before I finish my talk. This is a story which is so connected so much to what I do today and to the power of collaboration. This is a friend of mine who came to see me eight years ago. He had irregular heartbeats. And we diagnosed him with irregular heartbeats, and we told him, great, we can treat this. Let's get you to the lab, cath lab, put the catheter and cure you. He said, show me, what do you do? He said, this is a 2D image, this is an X-ray. I put you in, and I look point by point in the heart until I find the spot. He looked at me, I said, you're kidding me, right? I said, no, this way they said, Look at us in the gaming industry. I'm a gamer. He's in the gaming industry. We can make robots fly and go around the world. We can make uh, the human being face change. I take the heart out and put it back in for you. Whatever you want. To go across the ocean. Connect gamers. I have a talent of collaboration working for me 24. I have a, 
I have an animators, I talk to Disney, I have a software engineer, the coders, all sitting out 24 hours in basements making a difference. And they can make, they can make this difference. You've seen it here. And all of you know somebody, and probably you buy these games every week. Billions of dollars investment. They show the technology is there to make a difference. He said, no, sir, I'm not going to be treated. And he's not been treated. He said, as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, you're still here. <laughs> you're still using the Atari space. But by the way, I love this game. This was my favorite. Still, <laughs> it was an insult for me. <laughs> he wanted to insult me, but it was an insult. But, but that's the problem. That's the problem, Madison. This is, this is an example I showed you today. Really, this is very important to encourage this collaboration in medicine. And, and, and everybody, I want you to go out to encourage, promote, look for, invest in collaboration. We have the technology available to us. We have the masterminds of engineering. We need to get them. And start with me. I was one of these silos who think narrow-minded until I came here to this group and joined this group, the Karma Center group, they opened my eyes. It's that disease is not black and white. It's not eating after the fact, it's but before the fact. And work together. It starts with us as a physician. I really would like you to help with promoting this. And when you go out, demand it. Go to your communities. Demand collaboration in medicine. Because collaboration in medicine change lives. The most important thing that we all hear and outside care about, more important than the smartphone and more important than the uh, gaming industry. If we focus on the collaboration, we'll save lives and ours. Thank you. <laughs>